The 2013 stock car season kicks off today right here on Speed. Lucas Oil 200 for the ARCA Racing Series. And a veteran in this field has 76 wins, but never at Daytona. Yes, that's Frank Kimmel looking for his first Daytona win. How about some of the youth in this series? Kyle Larson, he's starting to make a name for himself in stock car racing. He will pilot one of the fastest cars we've seen this weekend. Daryl Wallace driving for Venturini Motorsports getting a little advice from Kyle Busch before the green flag drops. It'll be John West Townley who'll bring the field to the green flag. He wins the pole here at Daytona. Little overcast skies as the temperature dips to 63 degrees and continues to go down. The wind picking up 16 miles per hour here near the beach. Hello everyone, Rick Allen, Phil Parsons with you once again. This is the 50th ARCA race at Daytona. A big milestone that we've reached here. Now a lot of young drivers normally kind of make a name for themselves in this series and we've got quite a few of them in this field. Rick, we do. Everybody that grows up wanting to be a race car driver wants to race at Daytona. I did and I got my opportunity about 30 years ago. We've got a guy like Drew Charlson though that came here as one of those rookies last year, ended up with a second place finish. Half our field today will be first time starters here at Daytona. Can a rookie win? Yes, he can win here, but to do that, He's going to have to beat a guy that's won here eight times, Bobby Gerhardt. Here he is last year. This is about lap number 10. He comes in for a splash of fuel. He never came back to pit road. He was on the racetrack. Last restart, Alex Bowman runs out of gas. Coming off turn four, our leader, Brandon McReynolds, runs out of gas. Bobby Gerhardt was running fifth. He ends up in victory lane for the eighth time. you got to beat him to win this race. But Venturini Motorsports, with four strong cars, has the best chance. And Venturini Motorsports has never won at this racetrack. Now, when we talk strategy and pit strategy, when you come to Daytona, normally you'd say, well, what's the fuel window? But Gerhardt has really thrown that out the window as far as will you wait until you are almost out of fuel? Yeah, normally we say, okay, what's the pit window? 60 laps, something like that. Here, the pit window is any time you can get in your window. The, most of the talk in the garage area is we're going to go about 10 laps. If the caution comes out any time around 10 laps, they're all going to come to pit road, and that may be the last time we see him on pit road. Now, Kyle Larson, we saw him just in the open, a young driver who had over 100 starts in racing a year ago, really getting his feet underneath him now in the stock car world. Yeah, he's, he's so talented. He, he won the, the four crown this year at Eldora, won sprints, midgets, silver crown, all on the same night. We saw him almost win a truck race last year. He's going to make full time into the Nationwide Series this year, and he's going to get a super sp speedway start right here at Daytona. One of the more interesting and exciting young drivers we'll be keeping our eye on. The drivers are all strapped in. It's time to hear our command. We go trackside. Race fans, it is time here to deliver the most famous words in motorsports, Please welcome your Grand Marshal, Vice President of Commercial Sales for Dish Network, Bob Groves. Drivers, start your engines. Forty cars come to life. We talked about Venerini Motorsports being strong. They are the front row. John West Townley and Milka Duna will bring us to the green flag next. Coverage of the Arca Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high-performance lubricants and problem-solving additives for everyday cars and trucks. And by Menard, save big money on all your home improvement needs. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. And we're talking about the 50th annual ARCA race, and it's the Lucas Oil 200 at Daytona. The field working their way around the two and a half mile super speedway. Talked about John West Townley bringing the field to the green flag. He won the Menards Pole Award presented by Ansel yesterday. John West Townley posting the best mark and it's been a long time since a Venturini car has been on the pole here at Daytona, Bill. Yeah, and that was Big Bill, the, the team owner, and he ran over 200 miles an hour back in the 80s. Back in 1987, Big Bill posted the fastest qualifying mark here at Daytona. Your starting grid will roll across the top of the screen. Again, John West Townley and Milka Duna making up row number one. We'll ride along with a few different drivers. We'll carry cameras for us, one of those being the 23 of Spencer Gallagher in the Alliant 
or Allegiant Air Chevrolet. He starts 32nd. We're also going to ride along with the number 42 of Bo Lamastis, and he's going to have a special set of eyes up on top of the score. I mean, the spotter stand here. Jeff Bodine, 1986 Daytona 500 winner, will be spotting for Bo, and Bo will start his Crosley Radio Dodge from the 22nd spot. Also carrying one of our cameras, Sean Core in the number 82. He starts 18th, and the Warriors in the workplace Ford. We're also going to ride along in the 25 car of Justin Boston, and he will be full time this year for Benderini Motorsports in the Z Loop electric recycling Toyota. Give you some great pictures from inside these cars, a different perspective that you'll be able to see. Also carrying one of our cars, the 16 of Ricky Ergot in the Sandvik Cormont's Rev 1 Power Services Chevy. He starts in the seventh position. This year, Scott taking over the Rookie Challenge program for the Arca Racing Series. Some pretty impressive names that have won this honor in the past. Benny Parsons, your brother, back in 1965. And he finished third in this Daytona race back in 1965 in his rookie year. How about those names on there? Davey Allison, Bobby Gerhardt, Frank Kimmel, Parker Kligerman. Big names in the Arca Racing Series. How about the guys who are eligible for the 2013 prize? Of the Scott Rookie Award, and that's Ricky Ergot. Justin Boston, Bo Lamastis, Mason Mingus, Mason Mitchell, and Chad Bo will be names that we will keep our eye on throughout the 2013 season. Two of the best in the business working pit road tonight. We go down to Ray Dunlap and Jim Trado. Jim. Hey, Rick, one thing to think about is how fast these young rookies really can be. The fastest qualified car that is here for the very first time behind the wheel is Darrell Wallace Jr., a young Joe Gibbs racing development driver in this white number 55 machine. He is here as the third Venturini car to start in the first two rows. This car has been proven, been fast. This team's proven to put youngsters in victory lane. How important is it for him to get approval by NASCAR to run the truck series this year? He has to run laps here today. How important is it for this young man to prove himself to Joe Gibbs and J.D. Gibbs? They were down here giving him last minute thoughts right before he climbed in this machine so he has a lot to prove yet really nothing to lose he's going for the win here today ray and he's one of the young drivers we'll keep an eye on ray dunlap well jim later the proof will be in the pudding we'll find out what race car is right here in victory lane at daytona and each and every year i walk through the garage and i pick out my favorite over the last couple of years i thought for sure dario franchitti was going to win at daytona he didn't do it david reagan didn't do it ty Dillon didn't do it and last year brandon mcreynolds didn't do it so my favorite picks aren't always a great one but I have to tell you this I believe the four car of Kyle Larson is one to watch today not just because everybody believes he's a great driver they've got a Hendrick engine a great car from Turner Motorsports and I'm telling you that car is gonna be fast even though it didn't qualify well but what do I know whoever I pick never wins because Bobby Gerhardt always does you might want to pick Bobby Gerhardt this week this year let's see if we can talk to Bobby Gerhardt hey Bobby Gerhardt Phil Parsons up in the Arca boo speed booth can you can you hear me Clear. All right, buddy, you've won this thing eight times and you've done it different ways. How are you going to win number nine today? What's your strategy? Like we talked earlier, and, uh, you just got to play this thing like a little bit of a chess game. And, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a few aces, I believe, up our sleeves. And, uh, but no matter who wins this thing, Phil, it's going to have to come with a break. Uh, the race is going to have to come to me at some degree, but uh, I guess we'll just... Uh, Gonna have to wait and see how this Lucas uh, team's gonna take it. All right, buddy, great job out there all these years, and I'll uh, see if you can make it number nine. It's been my pleasure. What a ride. Uh, just want to thank all the fans come out to see us. You know, over all my 25-year career and uh, 50 years of ARCA, and uh, certainly a shout out to everybody in TV land, and uh, hope we will keep everybody on the edge of their seat, Bill. All right, thanks, Bobby. Well, they'll definitely be on the edge of their seat. How about Bobby Gerhardt? This car actually has won here the past two years. It, it, very impressive, right? Yeah. What about his backup, Phil? It won in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> so two cars that Bobby Gerhardt brought to Daytona account for three wins, the last three wins at this racetrack. And, you know, we go to Talladega, which is very similar, probably more similar now to Daytona, now that they both have been repaved. He will not take this car to Talladega. Right. He keeps this car right here for Daytona. So Bobby Gerhardt obviously has to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite, for today's race. 50th anniversary race here at Daytona. The first race way back in February 8, 1964, Nelson Stacy. 
Got the checkered flag at that one. And of course, we've just talked to the man who has the most wins, really the most wins at this racetrack of anyone. Uh, he's won eight wins. He even outdid the King, who had seven wins here in the Daytona 500. I know my brother Benny won him back in 1969, his second championship season. And I know what a big moment that was for him and, and our family for, to get to victory lane here in Daytona. And then he backed it up a few year, years later with a Daytona 500 win. Previous winners from Daytona being honored here. See Andy Hillenberg right in the middle of that group. And of course, some young drivers. Kyle Bush has won here. Ryan Newman has won here. There, there's Michael Annette there. I left you for screen. He's won here, made his move up to the nationwide series. There's Jimmy Horton. And the notable winners at this racetrack, Mike Wallace. We talked about a few of the others. Michael Annette and James Busher have been the only two that have been able to win this race in the last eight years that haven't been named Gerhardt. <laughs> Well, the field is all in line as they work their way into the tri-oval. The pace car has made its way onto pit road. That leaves the field in John West Townley's hands as he comes through the tri-oval. Green flag in the air. We're underway with 2013. Look at that start by Milka Duno. Milka Duno jumps out to the front. Looked like Darrell Wallace Jr. in the 55 car had a little bit of trouble coming up to speed. All the way to the double yellow line. You cannot pass. You cannot advance your position below the double yellow line here at Daytona. Didn't take long to get three wide, did it? Getting up to speed, coming down the back stretch. Three and four wide as they exit two and rock it down into turn three. I talked to Milka Duna earlier this afternoon. I said, what is your plan? She said, we're here to go to the front. We want to stay up front. She's there now. Working their way through three and four. Now up to speed. This pack will make its way upwards of 195 miles an hour when they're all together. As they work their way through lap number one, and it's going to be Milka Duno who will lead lap one at Daytona. Teammate, the pole sitter, John West Townley, rides along in her tire tracks. And how about that being the first lap she has led? Oh, trouble for Tom Hessert in the 77 car. Tom Hessert slow on the high side of the track. He's going to keep it up there, let the pack go by him as they go through one and two. Still a couple cars that will need to get by Tom Hessert before he comes back down, and he'll bring that onto pit road. Yeah, Tom was running in the 14th spot. Uh, good, strong competitor, race winner last year, driving for Kenny Schrader, looking to run for the championship. But, boy, a bad start for him here. Inside line, hugging the double yellow line now. Well, look at the momentum that inside line has. You see Grant Enfinger, the 0-9, leading that outside line. Chris Busher, our defending champion, right behind him. Trying to work together. They stay as a pack as they work their way across the start-finish line once again for lap two. I think the strategy is you want, want to keep the left side tires down by that double yellow line. That's what all the talk was in the garage area. They said, hey, uh, ARCA officials have taken a little bit of horsepower. They changed the intake manifolds. They're about 20 horsepower down from where they were last year. And they said it's extremely difficult to get a run on somebody. Tom Hessert is making his way to pit road now. Sean Kors' view is right, right along with that 82. You see how he is hugging the double yellow line with the left side tires. See Chad Boat, the 52 curb records car on the outside. Tom Hessert brings it onto pit road. They're fueling it up. Obviously not a scheduled pit stop. We have seen Bobby Gerhardt use this strategy, though. Ray Dunlap, what's going on down there? Well, guys, the left rear casing was completely off of Tom Hessert's tire. You can see out in the infield, just past the start-finish line, lies the outer casing of that Hoosier race tire. They have brought his car in here, and they decided they wanted to put all four tires on it just in case there was something else wrong. But you can see that casing rolling off and going down through the tri-oval here at Daytona. Yeah, that's very unusual. All the talk in the garage area, guys, was that, you know, we're, as you can see, Sean Core drive by that right. casing. Uh, that the tire wear was negligible. Most people in the garage are talking about not changing tires this entire race. And that casing of that tire has ended up just past the start finish line in the grass out of the way. So we stayed green out in front. Milka Duno. John West Townley's running in the second spot. Bobby Gerhardt holding on to third. How about Julian Juice Julian running Juice fourth right now? Has got the fourth spot. And then that 16 of Ricky Ergot. And Milka Duno, we talked about the fact that her first lap led here is the first lap she has led in ARCA.
see Julian Juicy see at the base of the windshield. You see some right there, some steam coming up. That car's running a little bit hot. Very limited practice right. time for these guys and gals. They had uh, their practice cut short by about three hours the other day. They had a brief 45 minute final practice this morning, but a lot of guys were working on tape, stuff like that. It looks like Julian Juice may have too much tape on that car. And, and that's one of the things that they didn't do was you did not see any pack work here during practice you never saw two three four cars multiple cars working in that first practice so not a lot of lessons learned as as how much tape they needed on the front of these cars and it looks as though julian juice may have just a bit too much on that one riding along with ricky ergot in the 16 just behind julian juice you can see that steam continuing to come out and that steam will that water will push its way out for a while and then it's going to run out of water and then it's going to melt that thing down so I think right now I would give up that spot certainly get out of line and see if air will cool it off if not then come to pit road top that thing off with water it's not worth it. that second line still trying to work its way up hasn't had a lot of progress and as you mentioned Julian juice has moved out of line see if he could get some air on the front of that race car yeah, that's a good move. Even if you have to give up some track position, even if you have to go to the back of this pack, maybe the thing will cool down, stop pushing water out, and you'll be able to continue on. The car slow on the inside line, the apron of the track. Can Julian Juice continues to push steam out at the base of the windshield of that 94? But he is out in front of the second line, so we'll see if the added air to the front of that race car is going to help out, potentially cool it down at all. Still Milka Duno out in front of John West Townley. Two Venturini Motorsports cars in front of this field. And once again, we will reiterate, Venturini Motorsports has never won in the Arca Series at Daytona. See the steam still coming out of the 94 of Julian Juice. He is leading that pack on the outside, and they're maintaining pretty well. Chris Buescher just behind him in the 17. So seven laps already complete, and it's been all Milka Duno since the drop of the green flag at Daytona. Knew it was a matter of time. Julian Juice in the 94. That motor has just blown up. And they start to see a little bit of the fire underneath that race car. They don't they don't fix themselves when they're when they're when they push all the water out of it. Green flag stays out as Julian Juice has made his way into the infield. And now the caution has come out for Julian Juice. He was running in the sixth spot. You see the flames now at the base of that windshield. You know, that's a situation, Rick, where that that was preventable. That, that thing was pushing water off from the time we dropped the green flag. It's at the base of the windshield so the driver can see it. Then the crew can see it. They're watching our TV broadcast. See, obviously, some fire inside the car. Julian's wanting to get out of there, but uh, he should have come to pit road a long time ago. Very limited oval experience for Julian Juice. He was done, doing a lot of his racing on the road courses. He called it the road circuits from France. Take another look. We saw it early. Yeah, we knew it was a matter of time. If, if he didn't come to pit road there, it, it exploded in a big way. Very fortunate for Chris Busher, the 17 right behind him, that everybody was able to avoid him. That was on board yeah. with Justin Boston in the 25. His look at it as he was going by. So we talked, Phil, earlier about the pit window fuel mileage they could probably go 60 or 70 laps but <laughs> their first opportunity may be the only time they'll be on pit road oh, we're, we completed 11 laps we're going to see if not the entire field most of the field come to pit road and planning on this being their last stop see teams getting ready to go over the wall Tonight, you get more live Monster Energy Supercross right here on Speed. See the world's greatest riders stampede into Dallas for a high-flying bar-to-bar battle for Lone Star State supremacy. It all begins tonight. That's 8.30 Eastern, live right here on Speed. And again, I think we're going to see fuel only unless some of the drivers maybe slide the tires coming to pit road, say, hey, I may have, have flat-spotted that left front or whatever. I think we're going to see fuel only. Let me ask you this, Tom Hesser.
had to come onto pit road because of the tire issue they had. Do you stay out of your Tom Hesser? I think I come in now because he's going to get the free pass. I think so. I think there's nothing to lose. He's going to have to start at the back because of the right. free pass. So come to pit road and get you, get yourself topped off. Expecting the field to make their way onto pit road. They're working down the back stretch now. He actually on our scoring monitor right now. He is being shown behind the 10 car bed Pampa, so he may not get the free pass. We're getting a report yep. now from the ARC officials that 10 is going to be the free pass, so Tom will have to uh, try to catch another caution down the road. Milkaduno, John West Townley running one and two. Townley was your pole winner. Lost the lead right at the green flag. Milkaduno with a great start, jumps out in front of the 15 of Townley and has held on to that spot until this caution. The first caution has come out, and so the pace car working around the track and it looks as though they are going to make their way onto pit road led by Milka Duno. So we will go down to pit road right on lap. And Rick, when I uh, canvassed the garage, it was obvious that everybody told me that if you had a Toyota, you could go the farthest distance. So they may be able to put a very little amount of gas in this race car for Milka Duno. She'll come down. She's right just past the start finish line. She'll come to the attention of Kevin Caldwell and all of her crew. All they're going to do is stick the Sunoco fuel in this thing and back to the track. Jim Trado. The Zaxby's Toyota is down on pit road, P2 for the pole sitter, John West Townley. The call from Kirchie and Kevin Reed, fuel only. No adjustments, just a splash, and he's gone. Safe for Bobby Gerhardt in the black number five, Lucas Oil Chevy. He'll beat him up pit road, put the five out front first. They actually got the pit work done so fast that they were stopped at the end of pit road. And now some, some cars have gone, some yeah. cars have passed them. Some stopped, some did not. So we'll wait to see if there will be penalties for going through that stop sign at the end of pit road. Issues Grand for the Finger 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 sideways Finger. in this pit. Could have been some contact there. And in finger looks as though stalled on pit road. Hey, so you see the race off of pit road. No could do no trying to get off pit road. And the 55 right of her teammate. Yep. Daryl gave her a break, letting her get out of her pit. Here's a race off pit road. Bobby Gerhardt, but he stopped about two car lengths past pit road. You see some of the cars still on the racetrack. That's why the stop sign was out for all the cars leaving pit road. John West Townley coming across the stripe second. But as you mentioned, those cars stopped once they got past that race line off of pit road. So we will restack the lineup. That's what it looks like when an engine blows up after you go 11 laps with no water. Friday, the world's toughest truckers will hit the high banks here in Daytona for a can't-miss trucks race of the year. Strap in for 250 miles of wide-open racing and a fight to the finish. That's sure to take your breath away. Don't miss the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series from Daytona Friday at 7 Eastern, live right here on Speed. We'll be back with more Lucas Oil 200 after these messages. Welcome back to Daytona under our first caution. The Lucas Oil 200. Julian Juice, that engine blowing up after it overheated. Other issues that have taken place under this caution, the 17 having to be pushed in. Jim Trado. And the word is from Crew Chief Gary Rulo, he said, hey, check the battery. The car physically died on the racetrack. No fire, no spark, no anything. So they checked the battery. He switched it over. It's fine. They think it may be the kill switch on the car. He said, even with a push, Crew Chief, Gary Rulo said, well, how about with the push? Can you clutch start it? He said, no, I, it won't fire. It won't turn over. The motor turns over, but it won't run. So there's some serious electrical issues for our defending series champion who's here for the win. He finishes high second here, guys, but he's technically not running for points. So a big win and a big blow for these Rulo brothers guys coming off the high of a championship. Ray? Well, Jim, there was another race car that high hopes today. That was the 09, the k site Motor Honey car from Grant Enfinger. He's making his 44th start in this series, and they felt like they had a car that could win. But as the pit stop happened, when he went to leave the pits, 
it broke a yoke off of the drive shaft. So they have gone to the garage area. They'll make repairs, and they do expect to get back into the race, but they'll be at least three or four laps down. So no shot at a win for today for Grant Enfinger from Alabama. There's so much grip on, on those concrete pit roads, and especially if you time it when you drop the, drop the jack and... It, even not, if you just dump the clutch, it's so easy to break something. Here's the confusion coming off pit road. You see Bobby Gerhardt wins the battle, but the stop sign is up. But look at the cars go by on the right. Ricky Ergot stops, but the rest of the cars keep on going. On the, but I think our officials right now are going to realign the field. And so while they do that, we'll take another quick break. Get it out of the way so you see more green flag racing. Daytona International Speedway. We'll be right back. Feel back in line now as we're showing the 0-2 of Josh Williams out in front of the field for the Lucas Oil 200. The green flag about to come back out after our first caution. It's in the air. We're back underway. And Josh Williams out in front in the 0-2. And it looks as though problems coming up to speed on a few different drivers as they span out. Here they are four wide as they get down towards turn number one. And that's not a good sight. Four wide going into turn number one, trying to get up to speed. They're going to stay three wide all the way through turn two. Cautions breed cautions, remember. We saw the five of Bobby Gerhardt try to make a run early on the outside. He's still on the outside running in the second or third position, whichever other position you want to put Bolo Mastis in, in that 42. But Gerhardt trying to make the outside line work. He's got some help coming up behind him with John West Townley. Remember, Bolo Mastis has Jeff Bodine up on the spotter stand. He's going to tell him, stay on the bottom of the racetrack. If those guys can pass you on the outside, fine. Stay on the bottom. It looks as though that five is making his way up, progressing. And it looks as though he will get by the 0-2 just before they get into turn number one. And now it's Josh Williams back out in front down on the bottom of the racetrack. Way up high, the 44 of Frank Kimmel. Yeah, Bobby has a very fast car of John West Townley right behind him now. Let's see what they can do. Remember, there's a bigger line on the bottom, but it looks like Bobby may have just a bit of an edge as they get down towards the end of the backstretch. I do want to bring in a real race fan. Just moments ago, he was fist pumping as the cars were working their way around the two and a half mile super speedway. And he just happens to be a former winner of the ARCA Racing Series here at Daytona. Kyle Bush, welcome to the broadcast. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me up here. What did you see that, that brought on the fist pump? Oh, trouble. And we've got issues in the trioval. The three involved, Drew Charlson. The 55, a Venturini Motorsports car up into the wall. That's Bubba Wallace in the 55 car. A lot of cars involved here. Saw Drew Charlson, as you mentioned, the three car. There's Another, a 25. Yep. 25 of Justin Boston. A couple of Venturini cars involved. 69 of Steve Kemp. Red Hudson, the 11 car. Wow, a lot of damage to Bubba Wallace's car. You mentioned cautions breed cautions we got that pack back together but then it really seemed like the restart a couple guys had problems they fanned out we were three and four wide and no one really got into a rhythm once that green flag flew now nah, there was sort of chaos on the restart there a bunch of guys had to split around and like you said they just they never got into into sync with one another and then all of a sudden this happens down here on the front stretch but i was fist pumping i was watching frank kimmel and michael duna working their way up on the yeah. top side coming to the front and then Two corners later, they're back to 20th again, but luckily they missed this melee, but there was still a ton of cars involved, unfortunate for a lot of different drivers. They're going to bring the field down pit road because there's so much carnage on the racetrack. Debris up there in the trial. Well, here's another look. Let's see if we can ascertain. It looks like somebody gets run into, Justin Boston, the 25, gets run into from behind. It looks like maybe Bubba Wallace yep. got into him. Don't know if Bubba had help being pushed and got into the 25 of Boston. It looked like the bottom lane, sort of accordion for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, everybody's wide open at that point on the racetrack. I mean, everywhere on the racetrack, right. you're wide open. But why at accordion? I mean, you can see it here. There's a couple cars. They're already checking up. See, they're all bumping each other right now. Yes. And Daryl kind of gets into the 25. And, and then he has help from behind also from the three. But the wreck was on from there. I don't know why people were slowing down like that. Seems like sometimes a deal like that, Kyle, as you mentioned, it starts from the back and, and go, works its way forward. Yeah. As, as, 
every car behind has more trouble getting slowed down than the rest of them. Let's well, see if we can look from this. The omnibus. spoilers are so high, and the drivers in these cars sit so low, you just can't see what's going on through the car in front of you, and and so your spotter plays a huge role. And uh, the sun too. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. See, everybody was checking up, and just there was er, nobody knew that was coming. That was Justin Boston, and it wasn't over. No, it wasn't over. You don't have any problem in that cup car seeing the seeing over that rear spoiler, do you? Not here, not here at Daytona. It's only about, it's only about three and a half, four inches tall. But you go to the rest of these places that we're going to head to, and it's eight inches tall. It's it's a little bit harder to see over. So the the mile and a half places will be a little bit different. It's unfortunate for the 69 car here. He was he was wide open, just sliding through the grass, and then right at the end he got hit. It's a Steve difficult Kemp. situation for Steve Kemp under our second green at Daytona. And once again, the second caution has come out in the Lucas Oil 200. This one for the melee in the trioval, just coming out of turn number four. As Kyle Bush mentioned, a, an accordion effect. Quite a few cars caught up in this. We've counted eight so far. There's Bubba Wallace's 55 car. See if we can take another look at it. Watch inside of your screen, about six or seven back. You see the, the white car right here. That's Bubba Wallace, and he looks like he gets into the back of Justin Boston. We don't know whether Bubba had some help and pushed him into Boston. Car sliding through the infield. There's the three of Charleston who ended up behind the wall. Enough damage on that car. Here are the ones that are involved in this incident. Some strong, strong cars, too. Mason Mitchell had a good car. Darrell Wallace, certainly. Justin Boston, two of the Venturini cars. Clay Campbell, the president of Martinsville Speedway, was making his Daytona debut. He's involved. Eddie Sharps, Caleb Armstrong, also involved. One of the numbers not on that list, but we were talking about earlier, Chris Buescher in the 17. Jim, what's going on with them? The BVEX tool for it is back on the racetrack. It was ignition-related issues. When the hood was up, that you saw them bring out the... Uh, I actually watched the crew physically switch the Mallory ignition box. They went through the wiring. They got it refired back out under this caution, but a big blow for these guys. They think it was ignition-related issues on his Ford. So, again, Chris Bush looking for the big W because he's not running for points this year, guys. Running some limited stuff in his Roush and Fenway development. And, uh, boy, what a big blow for these guys. They had a great run here his first time out. And, of course, went on to win the championship last year after finishing a disappointing 20th at Daytona. So, again, that W even more important for that Chicago-based team with 30-plus victories to their credit. They wanted one at Daytona. They have yet to get it. Yeah, unfortunate. Six laps down for Chris Buescher in that 17. Again, just happening, coming out of turn number four. The big one from Daytona. Bubba Wallace in the 55 into the back of the 25. Justin Boston, and the melee ensues. While this happened, that's Bill Gerhardt. He may have just won this race, or at least that's what he thinks. I'm guessing there's a few more restarts. Coverage of the Arca Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Ansel for over 100 years, a world leader in hand protection. Welcome back. A shot over Lake Lloyd. We take a look at one of the cars that made it through the melee. That is the two of Thomas Prater. And Moose has the Arca Mobile 200. Which Mobile. Be, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Mobile. <laughs> Arca Mobile 200. That's March night. That's the second race of the season for the Arca Racing Series. And a, a very impressive uh, debut for Mobile when they went there a year ago. The, the praise was so much for Rick Crawford and that whole group that uh, put on that race. They said, we've got to go back. Yeah, great schedule here. It's so, so diverse in this series. And I know Kyle has been a part of this series back in the day. We mentioned yeah. that he won in 2004. How about, uh, how about the diversity of this series, Kyle? There's a lot to it. I mean, they get to go race at so many different racetracks. You see Mobile and Salem and uh, Toledo, Elko. You know, those are just racetracks that the NASCAR series doesn't go to, but cool short tracks that are included in the ARCA Racing Series schedule that, you know, a lot of drivers that, like myself, I grew up at those places. I've been at Elko and ASA. I've been to Toledo and ASA. And uh, Salem, same thing, ASA. So uh, a lot of cool racetracks that are still around, that are still open today. And 
you know, we, we appreciate the fans at all of those places that come out and support the local short track series, which allow them to keep their doors open and allow them to bring in the cool talent of the ARCA Racing Series. Brendan Newberry still out on the racetrack, Jim. Indeed, he's up to 11th, guys. He actually came in and pitted. He was running top 10. But when you talk about experience, and Kyle, you can attest to this, Brennan Newberry's attempting to make a full truck season schedule this year as a teammate to Ron Hornaday. In his camp this weekend and today is Rick Corelli on the spotter stand. As the teams are discussing how to save fuel, Brennan said, Rick, talk me through it. How do I save fuel under caution? So, indeed, that a veteran experience as a spotter, certainly helping out this young man and trying to make his first foray here in ARCA and a full truck season ahead. Ray? Well, Jim, Darrell Wallace has come out of the infield care center, and I know that's not the way you wanted to start the season off. Can you tell us what happened? It looked like there was some contact between you and the 25. Yeah, it was uh, an idiot move on me. I don't know what else to say. I caused that huge wreck, and there's a lot more riding on the line, and a bunch of cars tore up. So hopefully, we'll just say hopefully we'll get to run next week in the truck race. Uh, it's just heartbreaking. Okay, Darrell Wallace out of the infield care center. He is good, and we're standing by here to see if a few more drivers will be released soon. Thanks, Ray. He might be a little hard on himself. I, I mean, he said he ran into the back of a, a car, but as you mentioned, they were checking up in front of him. He had no way of knowing that that car was going to come back to him like it did. No, he didn't. I mean, spotters can always play so much in this sport, too. So they are resetting the lineup. We'll be back for the green flag right after this. Field coming back to the line in the Lucas Oil 200 as the pace cars made its way back onto pit road. About to go back to green flag racing. It goes in the air. Bobby Gearhart out in front of the field at Daytona. That might be why Bill Gearhart was celebrating. He saw Bobby Gearhart get out front. Doesn't think there's a car in this field that can pass them. You know, I was watching that replay of, of Billy celebrating with his crew, and they hadn't wrecked yet. So they were celebrating the fact that Bobby got the lead, not yeah. that they were wrecking behind him. Behind him, a very stout race car. That's John West Townley in the 15. He won the pole earlier. A little bit slow on the track. Mel Caduno, we saw her leading the first 11 laps of this race. Yeah, one of the strong, strong cars in the field, but very, very slow at the exit of turn number two as you see the field going now through three and four. Benarini's got four cars in this race. Had. We're down to one, I yeah. think. <laughs> they had. Yeah. And it's been their luck at this race. No race. kidding. They um, have so much strong equipment. And we got a tire one. shedding now. Looks like Will Kemmel, the 68 car, will finish third in this race last year, but Looks like a tire came apart at the exit of turn four. You don't know whether he ran some, through some debris from that earlier accident. He was running in the fifth spot. Yeah, the left side tire just deteriorated as he came out of turn number four. We saw it flying apart, and they're going to go to work, see if they can get some left side tires put on that race car. We you can see, green. obviously, not ready for that pit yep. stop. It just happened coming off turn number four. Three cars separating themselves, but Chris Buescher in the 17, numerous laps down, so not on the lead lap. Caution now comes out. Third more, caution has come out now. More than likely for the debris from the tire from Will Kimmel. Now Milko Duno is finally making her way on the pit road. She just now is on pit road in the, as the field comes off turn number four. You see Will Kimmel, you see the car start smoking a left little bit. Left rear was flat. Left, left rear was already flat. Been flat. And now and it comes apart, apart yep. tears up the left rear quarter panel a little bit. Some of the crush panel comes out from under the car. Look at look at the debris on the racetrack. Let's go back to pit road and right. Well, thank you, Rick. I'm back here at the infield care center. And obviously, Bubba Wallace very disappointed with tearing up his car. But I'll tell you, you've got a whole season to chase down a championship here. And this is a tough way, Justin, to start the season at Daytona. Yeah, it's definitely a tough deal to come here and, and you know, get out of the race with a torn up race car. Um, it's just, it's a shame we got two tore up race cars this early in the race. It's definitely a place that you want to come show really well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer, it really is. That is Justin Boston, Z Loop, his sponsor, planning on chasing a championship this year in ARCA. Tough start of the season here at Daytona. You could see from that video that that he really rapidly approached the car in front of him right. and that's when the contact was so Justin had to hit the brakes to keep from running into the car in front of him and that's when Daryl Wallace Jr. got in the back of him really not much Daryl right. could do difficult situation we are under the third caution once again for the Lucas Oil 200 celebrating the 50th anniversary of ARCA visiting Daytona International Speedway Talked about the young men joining us up here in the booth. 
development driver for Hendrick Motorsports back in 2004. Came from one lap down, and that was before the days of the free pass to win the Daytona Arca 200 in 2004. Bush's career has obviously skyrocketed from there. He won two Arca races in 2003 at Kentucky Speedway and Nashville Speedway. And talk a little bit about what Arca racing did for you to really lay a foundation for your career. Well, the Arca series was a, obviously one of the stepping stones to the NASCAR ranks, you know, whether it's the truck nationwide cup. But uh, in 2003, I was able to get some starts in the Arca series and some starts in the then Bush series and um, sort of to get the experience level of the big speedways of the Nashvilles, the Kentuckys, the Poconos, Michigans, and then of course uh, the pit stops and all that stuff that goes along with it. So, um, you know, running in real cup cars at the speedways was, was what it was all about and being able to compete at this sort of level um, with the support of Hendrick Motorsports and all those guys. I had Gary Dehart as my crew chief, so uh, old, old Winston Cup Championship crew chief, you know, it was a lot of fun in those days. and. Uh, man, we, we had a blast running the races that we did, and I remember it was our first start at Nashville. We were able to win that thing, and then, um, you know, followed it up with a win at Kentucky. We had a, a couple other really good runs going, but uh, unfortunate circumstances took us out from being able to win a couple more. And at that time, the cars were really pretty much identical to a cup car. They were, yeah. You know, like same wheelbase, same. Exactly. Like we see today, they're a lot, they're a lot different. Obviously, the looks and everything like that. But, um, you know, the Arca was certainly a big stepping stone for me. And it's worked out obviously very well. Yeah. 24 Sprint Cup wins already for Kyle Busch. Thursday, the biggest stars of NASCAR return to the World Center of Racing for the Budweiser Duel at Daytona. Don't miss two white knuckle races as they set the field for the 500. It's the Budweiser Duel at Daytona. Thursday, 2 Eastern, live on speed. That's always a white knuckle event, isn't it, Kyle? It's going to be worse this year because <laughs> I was just reading the rules about all that, and nobody's guaranteed a spot anymore. We're going so back like it used to be. We're going yeah. back like it used to be. So you're going to have to make your way into the show, and if there's a 15-car pileup on the backstretch and you qualify 30th, you might be going to the house, and your name might be Dale Jr. or, or somebody in that nature. Myself. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, you're kind of throwing him under the bus early, aren't you? Green flag back in the air. Coming up to speed, Bobby Gerhardt out in front. John West Townley running second. The slower lap car, the 17 of Chris Busher on the inside. This Chris, might not be good for John West here. Yeah, I don't think Bobby Gerhardt would mind Chris Busher being behind him. Remember, right. two years ago, Chris Busher followed Bobby Gerhardt all the way to the checkered flag and finished second in his rookie year. Numerous young drivers, when you ask them if there's a strategy that they have coming into Daytona, they say, well, anywhere near Gerhardt will be good. Jim Trado. And that is the plan. Gary Rule, the crew chief for Chris Buescher, came down just moments ago to talk to Bobby Gerhardt under caution, said, we are going to stick with you. So watch that 17 suck up to the back of the five. It was for first and second just two years ago. Now it's to help the five. Bobby Gerhardt win number nine with the 17 and a push. Many laps down. See John West there, the yellow car in the middle of the racetrack, trying to figure out how to get back down to the bottom. Thomas Prater, the two car right now on his inside. There's Chad Bolton, the 52, right behind Prater. I tell you what, that 15 car is hanging really, really good on the top side with absolutely nobody there helping him. Riding along on the 16. Ricky Urgot doing a nice job here. Ricky looking to go full time this year. In the Arca Racing Series, run a full schedule for the Colters. Now we got John West has a little help up top. Yep. Yeah, now we got a line forming here. Looks as though the 52 jumps up there behind John West Townley. We'll see if Chad Boat can help out. And Townley has been able to clear the two of Prater so he could fall in behind the 17 if he wanted to get down to the bottom of the racetrack now. He has now. He has pulled in behind the 17 of Chris Busher. They're side by side, about six rows deep behind that top three. The elusive Daytona win. It's been difficult for Frank Kimmel and probably one of the most star studded resumes in the Arthur Racing Series. He only has one driver that has more wins than he does. 
Iggy Katona has 79 wins. He has 76, but he's never won at Daytona, and that's something that he definitely wants on his resume. And he got back to victory lane last year with a couple wins. It had a bit of a dry spell for Frank, but he got back to victory lane, moved over to Thor Sport Racing. They had a great season, and uh, looks, looks to maybe get Iggy this year. Once again, coming off of turn number four, almost looked again like a little accordion effect. Some cars slowing down just a bit as they came out of four. A lot bigger gaps in between the cars now than what we saw earlier in this race. A lot of the drivers were talking about having a little bit diff more difficult time pulling up because of the little decrease in horsepower this season over last season. Ray Dunlap. Hey guys, just wanted to give you a quick update on Milka Duno. She's another one of those drivers hoping to run every race and chase a championship. Driving for Venturini Motorsports today, she had a problem with the transmission. The linkage got stuck and she was in third gear only, so they had to go to the garage and work on it. From uh, what I can see, I think on scoring, she's five laps down. So another disappointing day for one of the other Venturini cars. Yeah, two of them caught up in the earlier incident. Daryl Wallace was involved as well as Justin Boston. Those two Venturini Motorsport cars behind the wall, and then we saw the 35 of Milka Duno have to go behind the wall to work on the transmission. It's been John West Townley that has been the strongest of this group, as now he is running in the second spot behind Bobby Gerhardt. Got a good view of Kyle Larson there in the uh, Turner Scott Motorsports car. That's very, very potent car there out of Turner Scott Motorsports. Remember, they won with uh, Brandon McReynolds right. at Talladega. And all, Brandon was leading when he got to the start of the trial well, last year and ran out of gas, and that allowed Bobby Gerhardt to get win number eight. Jim Trado. Well, Frank Kim won that bright yellow number 44 on the outside. That Ansel Glove sponsor machine is a Toyota. They have been able to get a great mileage, but what they've done in this race, Kimmel and his team with Richie's Jared Prince have come down not once for fuel, but twice, the last on lap 20. So as some of these competitors he's racing with came down as early as lap 11 for fuel, Bobby Gerhardt, you know, will want to stretch it. Kimmel had an assurance pit stop lap 20. He's right in the thick of things with a lot more gas than some of the other guys. We've had a lot of caution laps, too, since that lap 11 pit stop by Bobby Gerhardt and a number of the other guys. So I think... I think Bob, I know Billy Gerhardt thinks he's very comfortable right now to have enough fuel to get to the end, even if there is a green-white checker or two. Yeah, so is about everybody else, though, with those caution laps you mentioned. They're all pretty good, too. Closing in on the halfway point of this race, and as I mentioned earlier, there was, there was some larger gaps in between the cars. Kyle, that's gone away. They uh, don't look like they are giving themselves that cushion that they had just a few laps ago. Yeah, we're only a couple laps away from halfway, though, so there's still a long ways to go. There should be some some more riding to do but uh, as you know we're all antsy we all want to lead every lap we can and we want to get up towards the front and of course frank's trying to work his way up through there he's been pushing on the back bumper of chad boat and, and a couple other guys here that uh, you know just that outside lane just won't seem to get going here we can't get enough cars up there to get the momentum rolling and now you see chad pull down into the bottom lane and it's kind of leaving frank and one other car behind him there by themselves one thing we haven't mentioned is that Tom Hesrit was able to get back on the lead lap, get a free pass a couple cautions ago, and he's up in the top 15 now, but back in contention. Hesrit was driving the car that the left rear tire came apart and was able to make it back to, to pit road, but as you mentioned, lost a lap. See that sunshine as I exit turn number four. They're very disconcerting for a driver there, especially when you're running as close as you are to the car in front of you. And yeah. Yeah, it gets bad. I mean, you know, when, when we first make our first practice laps out there, we all, every time you go to a racetrack again, which I've been around, I guess now my ninth season I'm starting here this year in the Cup Series, is we're going to, the first thing we do is we always look, okay, well, where's the sun going to be? We know we need to set uh, our visor and everything and, of course, the tape on the windshield because these Cup cars now this year with the laid-back windshield a little bit more, it's going to be a different tape job. So our first practice, we got that all out of the way. and We're ready to go for the 500. You won't need it for tonight for the Sprint Unlimited. Under the lights at Daytona, some of the most exciting racing. And we could end up under the lights here at Daytona at the end of this one. And it was a pretty exciting uh, Sprint Unlimited race last year, although it wasn't called that for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, there was a lot of action going on. Not, not that I meant it to be, <laughs> but sparks. Uh, a lot of yeah, sparks. A lot of sparks. I think the track bar mount was probably half the size it was when we started the race, but um, you know, fortunately, we made it through. We ended up getting there towards the end and uh, got hooked up with Tony Stewart, pushed our way up towards the front, and then right here at the start of the the uh, trioval, we we pulled to the outside and got by Stewart right in the nick of time.
They've just passed the halfway point. 40 laps in the books, 40 to go. Bobby Gerhardt looking to grab his ninth Daytona win in the Arca Racing Series. Continuing our celebration of 50 years of ARCA racing from Daytona, Benny Parsons went to victory lane in 1969 in the Daytona ARCA 300. The same year, he won his second consecutive ARCA driving title. His career took off like a rocket. Soon after, he found himself with a top ride in NASCAR and established himself as an immediate contender, earning the Sprint Cup Series title in 73 and a victory in the Daytona 500 in 1975. We continue on, though, with the 2013 version of the ARCA Racing Series race from Daytona, and it's Bobby Gerhardt once again out front. You know, this reminds me of, uh, of the three car, the black number three car of Dale Earnhardt Sr. Whenever that car at Daytona was out front, everyone wanted to ride behind that three car. And I think Bobby Gerhardt has the same thing going on right now with that black number five car. Incredible respect from all of his, all of his competitors. They, they all talk about, well, wherever Bobby is, we want to be near him because obviously he's figured this place out. Bobby's the name you always think about when you come down to Daytona. I mean, he's the guy that's on top of everybody's list on trying to beat. And I just seen him down here. We did the photo out on the stage uh, before the, the race started. And I said, so what are you going for today? Is this six or seven? And he goes, no, it's nine. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm a couple of years behind. Sorry yeah. about that. How dare you? I see side skirt coming off of the zero two of Josh Williams. See how many bolts holds that on. And that's uh, just one, one now left. holding that one piece. That's a heck of a bolt. Yeah. Maybe they should have <laughs> put that one in all the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> they may put pop rivets in the rest of them. That, that one bolt's so doing its bolt. job. Yeah, it is. Now, we talked about just passing the halfway point. We've got 36 laps to go. Kyle, as a driver that's following, say, Bobby Gerhardt out there, what are you learning as far as, at this point in time, to try to figure out how to beat him? Uh, you're not really learning much, and the thing that you've got right now is you've got a lap car. So if I'm John West Townley, I've got a lap car in between myself, and you know the lap car, like we mentioned earlier, was a guy who followed Bobby and is going to stick with Bobby till the end of this deal. So, you know, the, the John West Townley guy needs to start talking to the guys behind him on what, what can we plan here, what can we do in order to get by. But if you look, there's only one, two, three, seven about seven or eight cars in the lead draft here and then you've got a, a gap until you get back to the second pack so you're kind of limited on what's going to happen but I don't I don't think these cars really tandem very well so I don't know that we'll see that but uh, you've got to make something happen I mean you can't just let it go down in order here with that first pack separating itself a little bit from the second pack would this be a, a time to maybe try something because you're only going to fall back to potentially seven How well, about this close well, call, the, these are the things that you might not want to try right. <laughs> um, or yet it's really not the time for those things to happen i think frank kind of got the close the door closed on him there with a the car in front of him forced yep. him into the bottom car he's got a little fender damage there it doesn't seem to be rubbing at the moment so he might be all right to continue but um you know you're at lap 45 and uh, there's still 26 cars on the lead lap, so you've, you've got a little bit of time here to try to strategize and plan something. But uh, like I said, with there being limited amount of cars in the lead pack, um, you've, you've got to figure something out. In that second pack that we were looking at with Frank Kimmel, they're now over three and a half seconds behind our lead pack, so th they need to stay in line right. and, and hope that that front pack starts maneuvering a little bit yes. to try to catch them. Otherwise, they're going to just keep falling farther and farther behind. Yeah, they will. And like you said, I mean, if that front pack does get to racing a little bit, then you will see the gap shrink a little. But, um, you know, they need to stay two by two or what have you for a few laps to, to get that other pack close back in. In that second pack, the contact was made between the 44 and the 48. I don't know if we've mentioned it yet, but James Harvey Hill driving the 48, and he is 78 years old. And we talked to him earlier this week and asked him, you know, what's, what's the plans? What's your future, James Harvey Hilton? You've been involved in stock car racing for so long. He said, this is it. This is my last season. This will be the, the white flag lap, as you'd say, in, in racing for James Hilton. And we asked him, what are some of the big memories you had, Phil? Yeah, he won. Uh, his first cup win was at Richmond back in 1970. And he said, I was so proud that I was able to beat Richard Petty in that race by 15 seconds. Yeah. He said, but Richard says, I was coming. I was going to get you a few more <laughs> laps. But he was proud of that. And also, he won at Talladega back in 72, 73. Yeah. And that was another big moment. Uh, yeah. I mean, anytime you're able to beat Richard Petty, that's, yeah. that's, that's something big right there. Anyways, oh, yeah. the guy's made a lot of wins in our sport. And also said that... Uh, winning rookie of the year in the cup series was another one of the 
the big highlights of his career. In so 1966. He has had quite a few highlights. And now making his final Daytona start in the ARCA Racing Series. Out in front is Bobby Gerhardt, again looking for his ninth win here at Daytona. Monday night, the hub will be must see. Get the latest breaking news from Daytona Speedway. The ultimate Daytona 500 poll day recap. Plus, hear directly from the drivers on the front row for the 500 NASCAR race up Monday night at 6 Eastern, right here on Speed. You know, Rick, what's amazing is we talked at that length with Billy and Bobby Gerhardt. Bobby, the driver, Billy, the crew chief. And this race is going exactly how they wanted it to go. They were able to get their pit stop around lap number 10. Not that they wanted to see that accident, but right. they were able to get back out front, a, a, a little bit limited front lead draft, going exactly how they wanted to go. And I think that was why you saw that fist pump from Bill Gerhardt saying, you know, we got out front, this is what we wanted. And right now, everyone chasing after that five, as we've seen so many times before at Daytona. You know, they were the first ones off pit road, but they weren't the first ones on pit road. So who's to say that they didn't short fill that thing in order to jump the line a little bit and get off pit road first? Because the 15, the 15, they were sitting there in the first stall because they won the pole. Right. And they were still filling as the five. Actually, they were leaving slowly as the five was going by. So if I was a 15 crew chief, I would have been looking down pit road and watching whoever the first guy was coming. I would have said, go, 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 whether I'm full or not. Yep. Yeah, they made a little bit of a fuel mileage run this morning. They had a, a 45 minute happy hour for the ARCA Racing Series. And Bobby told me, Bobby and Billy both said, hey, we got incredible fuel mileage in that 10 lap run. He said, we're really, really good on fuel yeah. mileage. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Thomas Prater running third, doing a great job here in the Mobile 200. Yep. Great Inter car. Great story on this on the door. His name is actually, it says Tom Moose Prater on there. They call him Moose. And it's because when he was running bandoleros way back in the day when he was younger, probably five or six years ago, <laughs> <laughs> way back, way back in the day, uh, they had a moose on his bandolero car. And so everybody just started calling him moose. Yeah, Thomas started back in the 34th position and he's made his way up to up to fourth right now. See, Bobby Gerhardt has to lead the pack around some slower lap cars. See if they're all able to get back in line. Kyle Larson was able to get by Thomas Prater in that little mix up with the lap cars and it now looks like that Thomas Prater now is in danger of possibly losing this draft. And we talk about two separate packs trying to run in the second pack trying to catch up to the first pack here. Looks as though they're closing the gap a little bit more now. That's Terry Jones in the 30 car. Terry right now is being shown a couple laps down. But you see Thomas Prater and Brendan Newberry both line up behind Terry Jones to see if they can chase down that front pack, which is now down to four cars plus the lap car of Chris Busher. Exciting news out of ARCA earlier today. They were able to announce the continuation of the relationship they have with Hoosier Tires. They will have a relationship all the way through 2015 with that group and they've had a, a very strong bond between Arca and Hoosier for quite a few years. Yeah, it goes back, I think, the exclusive tire supplier back into the 80s. So it's a tremendous relationship uh, that uh, Mr. Newton of Hoosier Tire, we lost Mr. Newton in the last year. So it's uh, a little bit bittersweet that, uh, that he's not here to enjoy this race. But that relationship will continue in through 2015. Bobby Gerhardt, John West Townley, Ricky Urgot, Kyle Larson, Bobby Crater out front. A lot of racing goes on here at Speed Weeks, and we've added a few races. Monday and Tuesday, the UNOH Battle at the Beach will take place. Monday, the Wheeland All-American Series. Slate models will be out on that short track, which will actually be about what you're looking at right now. It will transform into a short track, a four-tenth of a mile short track. And then Tuesday, the Modifieds and the NASCAR Canyon Pro Series will get to that short track that will be that will incorporate the back stretch here. Yeah. So how are they setting it up? Are they going to paint lines? Are they going to put cones down or what? Barriers. There will be barriers put up. Barrier. That's awesome. Yeah. 
There'll be a lot of room over there, though, I think, from what I understand. There is. But we, right now, we see at the back of this pack, Kyle Larson. He's running in the fourth spot, fifth in line. He will be in, uh, I, guess, I think, all three of those races. Yeah, I think so. Monday and Tuesday. Doing... Uh, really? Triple duty. Triple duty. Modified, huh, for Larson? Yeah, yeah. Let's Sounds go back. like Kyle Busch. <laughs> Let's go to Pitt Road and Ray. Well, guys, I've been listening in to Kyle Larson in that Cessna Chevrolet, and basically he said, tell the three or four guys that are right behind me we're getting ready to go with about 12 laps to go. Then a little bit later, he looked up in the rearview mirror, and he said, where did all the guys go that were right behind me? They were tucked right up on the back of that number four, but now nobody back there, so he's going to have to come up with an alternate plan if he's going to go up there and have anything for Bobby Gerhardt. Jim? Well, right in the middle of it all is that blue and black number 16 of Ricky Aragot, the young man who nearly lost his life in a crash at Kokomo Speedway in an open wheel car in 2009. He has veteran leadership surrounding him. This is John Wolfe you see on the left-hand side of your screen. He was Patrick Shelter's championship-winning crew chief. Wolfie's been around a long time. I talked to him. Are you good to go? He said yes, and he crossed his fingers. Watching Skyward to help Ricky Ergot make his way to third right now is T.J. Majors, another veteran spotter. So Ergot, first time in a track ever this big, doing a great job running third with the veteran guys hanging around him with the Coulter Motorsports team. You know, that's the nice thing about being here as we see him three wide at the exit of turn number four is there are so many of the good spotters like you, the spotters that work for you guys, Kyle, that these guys are able to use and really help them a lot. Yeah, exactly. You know, we were talking about some of that earlier with the, the, the Daryl Wallace deal and how he kind of got caught up in the accordion deal. His spotter actually is a guy that he's used through the years coming up through the ranks, racing late models and everything else. So he doesn't quite have the experience level that some of the other cup spotters do. And so... Maybe that was something of it, but, you know, Daryl wanted to use his guy and, and kind of progress with that guy who is a familiar voice in his ear and who's going to help him through the truck series this year. So, um, you know, hopefully that relationship, they can learn from what happened in that scenario and be good in next Friday night's truck race. Once again, two packs. The lead pack now down to just five cars. And in that lead pack, the 17 of Chris Busher not on the lead lap. Busher being scored six laps down, but he is the first car behind race leader Bobby Gerhardt. And they have already talked about the two working together. Busher trying to help Gerhardt win his ninth yeah. race. And at some point, I think that he needs to get out of the way. Chris Busher needs to get out of the way and let these guys race for the win. Move out of the way. Let John West pull up on Bobby Gerhardt's rear bumper and see if they can do something maybe with some help from behind. That's a good point. Inside of 20 laps, matter of fact, 17 remain here in the Lucas Oil 200. And Kyle, I know you've got to go to a driver's meeting. We've got so a thanks, driver's meeting, so thanks for appreciate joining you guys us having here. us. Thank Good you luck very tonight. Much. Thank you. Keep it going straight. Yeah. Coverage of the ARCA Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high performance lubricants and problem solving attitudes for everyday cars and trucks. And by Scott Prep and Cleanup Solutions for contractors, DIYers, and mobs. All available at Menards. Just 15 laps remaining from Daytona. It's Bobby Gerhardt in front of Chris Busher, who is six laps down. And then behind him, the car running second, is John West Townley in the 15. John had won the pole yesterday. Started on the pole, but it was his teammate, Milka Duno, who jumped out to the lead at the very drop of the green flag. And so John West Townley has had a problem getting up to the front. You see John West right now. He's backing off a little bit, dragging a break. He's trying to see what he can do here as we're getting down towards 10 laps to go. And uh, I think right now he feels like he's going to have to try to do something with the 17 and the 5. So he's going to need some help to do that. And he's going to try to get the 16 of Ricky Ergot as well as Kyle Larson to go with him. And again, that lead pack continues to work its way around the two-and-a-half-mile super speedway. And behind them, you see them two-by-two two fighting for a position. Yeah, some great stories here. There's Terry Jones in the 30 car. He's, he's a couple laps down, but you have Spencer Gallagher right there in the 23 car. Then you've got uh, Mark Thompson right now in the 62 is running in the 11th spot. Mark's got some experience here. There's Tom Hessert, who had uh, had that flat tire at the very start of the race in the 77 car. There's Chad Boat making his first Daytona start in the 52 Curb Records car. There's Michelle Distier in the 22 car. 
He's doing a nice job here yeah. running up in the lead uh, on the lead lap in 11th right now. Just outside of the top 10. Matt Kurzievsky in the 54 running in the eighth spot right now. So again, not in the lead pack, but running very strong. Frank Kimmel running fifth. And you see him leading that second pack now. The four cars that have separated themselves, or five cars that have separated themselves, including the 17 of Chris Busher out in front. They are that lead pack. A full 15 seconds in front of the, this pack led by Frank Kimmel. And, oh. and I, I guess I, I want to pose this to you. The 17 of Chris Busher is six laps down. As we close in on the final laps of this race, does he become a nuisance for say John West Townley. He's without a doubt a nuisance for John West Townley if he's already if he's already stated he's going to try to help Bobby Gerhardt but I really believe that at some point very very soon I think Chris Buescher needs to back off and let these guys race it out for the win here. I know he wouldn't want somebody six laps down interfering with sure. his opportunity to win a race so I think at some point he needs to back off and then let these guys fight it out. Just 11 laps to remain from Daytona. Bobby Gerhardt out in front. Once he was able to take the lead, no one has been able to get out of line and even challenge him for that top spot. Slower lap cars just in front of this lead pack that will be going by those cars in just a moment. Again, John West Townley running second. John West's best career finish come, came right here at this race. A few years ago, he finished third. You see these guys make their way around the top side of these lap cars. And Bobby Gerhardt setting the pace as we normally see him do here. And it's, it's not something we can blame on right. Bobby Gerhardt. He's got the 17 of Chris Buescher that, that <laughs> wants to help him. Right, he's trying to help. Trying to help, and right now, John West Townley's trying to figure out with 10 laps to go, what can I do? We're going to take a quick break. Close racing, not in the front pack, but just behind him. 75 of Benny Chastain involved in this. A lot of amazing things just taking place on the racetrack just as we were coming back from break. Bobby Gerhardt just rocketed down pit road at speed. It looked as though he got a little bit loose coming out of four, and it looked like it might have been John West Townley who got into the back of him. Yeah, just prior to that, we saw the move over flag being displayed for Chris Buescher. He moved out of the way on the backstretch to let these guys fight it out. You see right now the 15 car, John West Townley, in the lead with Kyle Larson, the four car running second. Now, John West Townley had come up on the five. You take a look at this. Busher moves out of the way. Here comes John West Townley. They're working through three and four. And oh. It looked like the five was slowing yeah. down. Bobby definitely slowed for some reason. John West may have gotten to the back of him. You see him come down pit road at speed. I think the rule is that you have to slow down. You won't necessarily get penalized for speeding, but you have to make an opportunity or an effort to slow down. It didn't look like Bobby did coming down pit road. Phil, you remember what Kyle said? Potentially, they, they didn't put all the fuel in that five just in case they could get off pit road early. Could he have run out of fuel coming out of four? He could have, but he didn't stop, though. He didn't yeah. stop by pit road, and he's still running on the racetrack. And now it's John West Townley, who's out in front of Kyle Larson. Two youngsters in front of the field now at Daytona with just six laps to go when they come to the stripe. It'll be five remaining. Jim, what happened with the five of Bobby Gerhardt? Bobby Gerhardt just told his brother Billy in the pits, I don't know what happened, but when he came up with turn four, he got a bit of a nudge, but when he came down pit road, he said there was a, the car stuttered, the car sputtered a bit, and now it's sputtering again on the number five Lucas All Chevy. They're getting the gas cans ready. He pitted on lap number 11. He's already pitted on lap five and won this race, but the Lucas All Chevrolet may be out of fuel. That's amazing. Kyle Busch speculated that maybe, and that, and that may have been where that initial little burp there was yep. when the thing really lost fuel at the pickup and then it picked it back up when he once he got on the flat and you could see that John West Townley had a little bit of a run coming out of four but then the five really slowed down and that's when John West Townley got into the back of him but very very light contact there I think Bobby was going to come to pit road felt like he was running out of gas then maybe the fuel picked up again that's why he kept on going four laps of racing to go John West Townley in front of Kyle Larson 
about Ten miles remain. We have John West leading and two drivers running second, third that have never been here to Daytona before. We talked about it. Half the field, first-timers here at Daytona. Two of them right now with a shot to win. Ricky Urgot running in the 16, and there's the five. And it looks as though he's going to go all the way up against the inside wall as the field continues around this two-and-a-half-mile super speedway. They're going to race it out. John West Townley looking for his first win in the ARCA Racing Series. And I wonder right now if Kyle Larson in the four car, as you see the stalled car of Bobby Gerhardt, he is way, way off the racetrack now. That doesn't mean that you couldn't hit that wall down there. We've seen cars hit that wall. But right now we're going to stay green with three to go. We, I wonder if Kyle Larson and Ricky Ergot's crew are getting together. Remember, both of those cars, Chevrolets, that's a Toyota out front. Kyle Larson. The young phenom making his way into the stock car racing after coming off of a very successful dirt career. Oh, a lot of heavy traffic here. These guys will probably run into this traffic here. We got two and a half laps to go. Lower car moving to the inside, but it's Kyle Larson. All over the back bumper, that 15 of John West Townley. Right. Hey, Rick, the Turner Scott Motorsports car that Kyle Larson is driving is chassis zero two. It won at Talladega just a year ago with Brandon McReynolds behind the wheel. They said after that race, they threw a cover over it. They had a lot of confidence in this young driver. They believe he's got what it takes to make the move on Townley and get a win in his first ever start here at Daytona International Speedway. It's going to have a lot to do with traffic because they're rapidly approaching about about 10 cars in front of them. Right now, John West is only about 10 car lengths behind the very tail end of those lap cars. Less than two laps of racing to go, a lap and a half as they go down the backstretch. Your race leader, the yellow car, the number 15 of John West Townley. Coming up on the slower lap traffic now. They'll have to move by the slower traffic and they move to the high side. This is what's going to mix it up right here. John West did a nice job getting by Ed Pompa in the 10 car. Look at them. They're side by side up in front of them here. Coming down for the white flag. This is it. One lap to go. John West Townley takes the white flag. Kyle Larson, two car links behind on the final lap. Very anxious moments right now for John West. Which way is he going to go? They're too wide in front of him. Now they go all the way up to the wall as they're working by the slower lap traffic. John West Townley trying to claim his first win in the ARCA Racing Series. He gets by the slower lap traffic, and now he's going to move all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack. Nice move. It looked like he never had to break stride. You see Kyle Larson is able to get in front of Thomas Prater. Thomas had to make a late pit stop. Now it's one car length as they work through three and four and come out to the tri-oval. John West Townley after winning the pole here at Daytona. Now being chased by Kyle Larson coming into the tri-oval. John West Townley will win at Daytona. And the Venderinis finally get to victory lane in Daytona. The celebration will start right now for that whole Venturini family and team. They had four very, very strong cars here. Three of them had trouble. The fourth one goes to victory lane. Here comes fourth. It's going to be Frank Kimmel holding on for that spot. That's how far back that second pack was from the first. Sean Core, a top five finishing position. Brennan Newberry, sixth in this race. And Mason Mingus back in seventh. Mark Thompson back in eighth. Kurzievsky in ninth. And Chad Boat in tenth. How about John West Townley? Going by a sputtering five of Bobby Gerhardt coming out of turn number four. Amazingly, John West Townley claims the victory for Venturini Motorsports. Well, he did an outstanding job. He was there when, when he able to take advantage when Bobby Garrard had trouble. How often do we talk about Bobby Garrard having trouble at Daytona? Right? Hardly ever. You never see the five having a hiccup at all, and he has it late in this race. Again, coming up, it's NASCAR race day fueled by Sunoco from Daytona International Speedway. We were, we will hear from John West Townley in NASCAR race day. So those of you getting ready for the Sprint Unlimited, this will be taking place here in just a few moments from Daytona International Speedway. You'll hear from John West Townley there. A big win to start the 2013 year 
for Venturini Motorsports and John West Townley. Yeah, John West is going to run full time for Red Horse Racing in the Truck Series. So what a great start to Speed Weeks in 2013. His 26th start, he goes to victory lane. John West Townley, congratulations. Now, coming up next, it's NASCAR Race Day here on Speed. You saw it live on speed just a little while ago. It was a first for John West Townley as he drove his number 15 car to victory lane. Not only was it a first for John West, but it was also a first for Venturini Motorsports. Let's go to Jim Trado, who was in victory lane. And climbing out of the car is John West Townley. Billy Venturini had his run through to congratulate his driver, said, I've been waiting 31 years to walk across this black and white squares in Daytona Victory Lane. His crew chief, Kevin Reed, worked very hard on this race car and built this car three years ago while at Venturini's. Here comes the kiss. The Granitelli smooch from Bill Venturini. I don't know if John West knew that was coming, but nonetheless, John West, you had your chance, you took it. You said you had a fast car to begin with, and man, what a way to put an exclamation on a win today. I know, man, it's, uh, I'm ecstatic, man. I really, I don't have no words, I mean, I, I'm just going to thank Zaxby's and thank Venturini Motorsports. I mean, to have this opportunity is amazing to be out, to come out here and get a win at Daytona. You got a taste of what they did last year in one race. Now you're going to run a few more and a nationwide effort with Venturini's. What made the difference today with this race car and your approach? Well, I mean, as far as I know, you know, we just uh, we just had luck on our side. I think uh, at a place like this, I mean, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to stay out of trouble until the end and just kind of bide your time and don't do anything stupid and that's that's what we did and it paid off you got the bobby gerhardt's rear bumper what happened from your perspective uh you know i, I don't know i really don't uh you know all, all of, at some point he just got out of the throttle and i was right and i was tail to tail and i just had nowhere to go so i don't know i don't know what happened with him yet. i'll have to I'll have, i might ask him later we'll find out soon john west townley starts out speed weeks here in daytona with a victory in the arca race townley first time for venturini and victor lane at daytona well, Jim.